this is the last hour of physics 1c for march 26th uh we're gonna finish doing this problem and then we're gonna look at one other problem uh, did you guys finish doing loop three did you get an answer for the chat i think i started the stream again right yep anyone get an answer for this So where'd you start? Let's see real quick here. One second. Like here? Okay. So you got five I one, that's from the two plus three and then the I one, right? Okay, that's right. So to I three, yeah, because you there's nothing between not So minus 10 volts, yep, so negative 5 I1. So yeah, you, we, we can skip over the sums, right? Because I think people probably can tell that if I put negative 2 I1 and then negative 3 I1, you're going to get negative 5, right? Okay, and then minus 10, okay, and then down to here. That is correct. Were you guys, were other people able to get this one too? So I want to make sure of something here. This is five minus 10 is negative five. We added it to the right side, yeah. This one was negative five because loop one was here, negative and became positive on that side, okay. Oh, so this one actually here, I don't actually want to circle that. What I want to do is I want to write it like this. I want to write minus five I one minus 10 equal to 10 volts. So now, as we try to solve these kind of problems now, um, we've got these four equations, right? How many unknowns do we have? Yeah, what are they? It's the currents, right? So how many of these equations can we actually use? Or how many should we use? And which ones should we use? Which three equations are we gonna use? The three from the loops. All right. Anyone have other ideas? Do other people also want to try the three from the loops? People want to try something else or anyone have a reason? All four of these equations that are circle could be used. It's just a question of which ones we choose, okay? Can anyone tell me a reason? Looking at these three equations here, four equations here, how would you know which ones to use? Sure, we could do that. I'm looking for more of a general strategy for solving equations like this, if that makes any sense. What, how would you know which ones to use? Like, I know the answer, but I'm wondering from a mathematical perspective, if you're given these four equations, how would you know how to start? Um, what, what kind of reasoning would you use? Is there any set of three we can't use? That's the real question. Is there any set of these three equations that you can tell very quickly we're not gonna be able to use? Can anyone see it? It's tricky. It's a mathematics thing, but maybe some of you have learned it. What? I'm telling you, you cannot possibly use all four, and that if you choose the wrong three, you'll get nonsense, is what I'm trying to say. Does that make sense? 
don't know if that helps at all. Let me give you a, a simple, simple example here, just to kind of like have you guys think about this. So, where's my little thing that lets me move to the right? I can go up and down. Where's my little, there's a little thing down here where I can move left and right. Maximize. Where did it go? Well, that's not good. How do I, whatever, we'll just do it up here or something like this. All right, so suppose that I have the following two equations. Let's say I have x plus y is equal to 10. And I say also that 2x plus 2y is equal to 20. What is x and what is y? Yeah, that's right. These two equations, what, what's wrong with using these two equations to solve? What's the answer? They're, they're the same equation, right? They're the exact same equation, 100%, right? You guys agree? What's the answer? What's x and what's y? Not any values, but like 4 and 6 and 5 and 5 and 4 and 6 and 4, but they still have to, but it's, it's an infinite set of ordered pairs, right, that basically fit this line, y equals to x, or what, 10 minus x, right? It's basically all the points that lie along, what, x equals to 0, I don't know, whatever, some line like this, right? These are not unique equations, and you can't use them to solve things, right? Let me give you another example. Yeah, you're getting way ahead of us, Matthew, but you're absolutely right. That is what we're going to do. But the point is you can't just use it blindly. You have to think about which equations you're going to use, okay? That's what I'm trying to get you guys to think about. This is just a general math thing. So what about this? What if I tell you x... Oops. What if I tell you x plus y is equal to 10, and then I tell you... Um, negative x plus z is equal to, I don't know, 5. I'm having to create this off the top of my head now. And then I tell you the last equation we have is y plus z equals 15. Can you solve for x, y, and z? You want to try it? Well, I just wrote it down. Give people a chance. You guys want to try? Let's try to solve these three equations. Very simple equations, you guys would agree, right? Try to solve for any of the values. I don't care which one. Just try to solve for one. Take like two minutes. Give it your best. Use any method you want. I hope I didn't mess this up. <laughs> What are you guys finding as you solve these equations? What's happening? No. I mean, maybe, but... What's the problem? What are you guys noticing happens? Can't single out any one variable. What does that mean? Can't solve for any of the variables. Why not? What's the reason? Why can't you solve for any of the variables here? What, what keeps happening? You get this, right? No matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, every equation leads to this. Every single one, right? You can't solve for the variables. You can't isolate them, as you said, right? It's not possible. Are you guys, are you guys all in agreement on that? You guys see what I mean? It doesn't work, right? What's the reason? What's the fundamental reason? Does anyone know? What's the reason why you cannot solve these three equations? Is it... There's infinite solutions, that's correct. But in and of itself, I could give you an equation like this. A plus B equals 1. That has an infinite number of solutions. Why do these three equations also have an infinite number of solutions? What's... what's, what's what is the reason? Oops, didn't mean to do that. What's the reason why 
it's not going to work. And how did I know it wouldn't work by, before I wrote them down? Certainly you guys can see the pattern of how I wrote those equations. How did I know it wasn't going to work before I ever told you to solve them? That's close, but it's not exactly right. I could give you I could give you another example where I put three variables in every equation and it still won't work, if that makes any sense. You know what I mean? But you're close. What is the reason? What does that mean? You're close. They're all dependent on each other, right? They're all, all the variables are basically a function of the other variable. You can't get, isolate one of them. You guys have all said that, that's right. That word dependent. How many of you guys have taken linear algebra? Like a few of you, I see. What? Oh, whether you forgot or whatever, I just mean if you've taken it. One of the things you prove in that class is that you can, it's also, this is, you prove this in algebra too. It's just, it's more, I think, concretely proven in linear algebra. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. That if you have a set of three equations, they have to be what we call linearly independent. That means that um, if any two of the equations can be added to give you the third equation, then this third equation isn't actually new information. Does that make sense? One plus two, whoops, not, not circle. One plus two in this case, right? You can see if I add one plus two, this is equal to equation three, right? So this equation is not new information. It's not new information, that looks like hot. This equation does not provide any new information. One of the rules in math is that I can take two equations and I can add them together, right? So this isn't a new equation. It's not linearly independent, that's what they say in mathematics. Um, this equation depends on the other two equations, right? In the same way in which you were noticing that each of the variables depends on the other variables, right? So if you have two equations, when you take one plus two and it equals three, this leads to basically no solution or infinite number of solutions, right? Can't be solved, right? You can't, I, you can't, uh, you can't solve individually for the values. You can only solve for relationships between them. Does this all make sense to you guys? Does anyone have any questions about the mathematics here? Okay, let's go back to the problem. What we're trying to do, right, is we're trying to solve for i1 and i2 and i3, which are effectively just three variables. You call them x, y, z, right? Can you tell me now that we've had this little math lesson, what is, do you see any of these three equations that if you were to use them together would lead to the same problem? This one, this one, this one. If you, if you look at any combination of three that will not work. No, not exactly. So. Yeah, exactly. Can you guys see that? If I take, I'll put it up here. If I take loop one plus loop two, I think it's equal to loop three. Do you guys see that? Take one plus two. Notice that this and this are opposite, right? And then 5 plus 5 is 10. Negative 10 I3. I should really be doing this with mouse. Negative 10 I3. Negative 10 I3. Uh, negative 5 I1. Negative 5 I1. And then 5 plus 5 is 10. So basically, this third equation is not new information. Does that make sense? So if we're going to do anything, we can choose like the junction rule loop 1 and loop 2, or the junction rule loop one and loop three, or the junction rule loop two and loop three, you cannot choose all three loop rules, right? That's the general thing you should take from this, is that when you solve equations like this, um, you have to use the junction rule at least once, okay? So you never wanna use all of the loop rules. Dep it, it, it kind of depends on just that the third loop is always going to be a, a superposition of the other two loops. And you, you can also see this from the perspective of the problem, right? Because loop one, we went this way. Loop two, we went this way. And loop three basically just bypasses the inner loop. The uh, loop three bypasses the, the inner segment right here, right? 
And if you look at it, loop one goes this way, loop two goes that way, they basically just cancel each other out in the middle. So and it doesn't matter how you do the loops, this is just always how it's gonna be. You have you have to you have to use the junction rule plus the these other two. So we're gonna use these three right here. All right. So are you guys ready to finish and solve this then with the equations we have? So this is one of our equations. Those are the three equations we want to solve, right? And um, where did my little thing go? There we go. So to solve these equations, uh, there's a couple ways we can do it. Uh, I'll show you two methods, okay? So you can solve it however you want. Maybe you guys can go ahead and start trying to do it before I'm even finished here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve, um, you notice the I2 appears in both equations. So I'm gonna solve for I1 and just eliminate over here. So we're gonna say basically in this one, um, we're going to have I1 should be able to show that this is equal to uh, 5 volts minus 5I2 divided by negative 5, which we can simplify a little bit to just be 1 volt or negative 1 volt uh, plus 5I2. No, whoops, not 5 plus just I2, okay? And then over here, we can do the same thing. We can solve for I3 and say I3 is gonna be equal to, um, let's see, five volts plus five I2 divided by negative 10. So this one's gonna be five over negative 10 is gonna be, make sure I did this right. Does that algebra look right to you guys? What do you guys think? Does the algebra look right? Both, both cases? Okay. So we've got that is I3 and that is I1. And this equation says that if I take I3, so let's scroll down just a little bit. So if I take here from this equation, I3 is this, right? So we have negative 0 0.5 volts um, minus 0 0.5 I2. And then that's plus negative I1, right? So plus negative of I1, I1 is this one, negative one volt plus I2. And then minus I2 equals zero. And then we just need to group terms. So what do we have? Uh, we've got um, I2 and it has these coefficients like negative one I think this is another negative one, right? So negative, negative, and then minus 0.5. Those are the coefficients for I2. And what's left is negative 0.5 plus one. Is that it? So negative 0.5 plus one would be positive 0.5, right? So this becomes negative 2.5. We can add it to the right-hand side equals to 0 0.5 volts. So that I2 is gonna be 0.5 divided by 2.5. 
And this is where we have to remember that 2.5 was actually in ohms, right? We dropped the ohms from all of these things. Every Everything that's a coefficient of i has an ohms in it. And volts divided by ohms gives you amps. And this is like 5 over 25, which is a fifth. So probably 0 0.2 amps is I2, which means that I1, which is negative 1 volt plus I2, the units of this is actually in amps. Now I, I'm being bad because it's volts divided by this was in ohms. So realistically, all of these should have been amps. I should probably go back and fix this. This is a little too big of an eraser there. That should have been amps. That should have been amps. I'll put it in red to indicate that I made a mistake or green or something. This should be amp. Oh my God, it's so hard to wrap this thing. Amp, amp. Now I'm confusing myself. <laughs> Wait, was it actually supposed to be volts the whole time? This is 10. What's up? You don't know why what? Yeah, like here, for example. Um, it's because 5 divided by 10, this was actually ohms, and this is ohms. Sorry, I... These kind of problems, I don't really like writing units, it's really annoying. But I should, I should really be writing them. No, I'm right, these are all amps. Everything is in amps. And these, these, are, uh, these are all actually pure numbers now. Um, but, but literally everything up here was, this was like 5 ohms, this was like 5 ohms. And if you track it, this is ohms. Volts over ohms gives you amps. And this is also ohms, right? So 5 ohms over ohms gives you just I2. Okay, I'm really sorry about that, guys. I'm not trying to confuse you, but it's just the nature of physics. This stuff is really complicated, and I'm kind of just doing this on the fly. Okay, good. All right, so the next thing to do then is to solve for I1. So we found that I2 is equal to 0.2 amps. You plug this into here. So negative 1 plus this becomes negative 0 0.8 amps. And then what is it? Uh, I3 is now going to be equal to, it was negative 0.5 amps minus 0.5 times I2. A little harder to do because 0.5 of this is going to be 0.1. So negative 0.5 minus 0.1 would be negative 0.6, I think, right? Those are our answers, okay? This one's I2. And I very easily could have made a mistake here. It's a lot of algebra. Huh? Oh, that's good to know. Now I'm going to come up here and write our answers down again. So we had, uh, for our answers, we got um, I1, I2, I3. And I just want to look back at our picture again. Maybe someone can tell me so I don't have to go back and look. I think I2 was 0.2, right? And one of these was ne negative 0.8, one was negative 0.6. I think this one was negative 0.8, right? Thank you. And then this one's negative 0.8 amps. So those are our equations. Those are our answers. I want to just go back and look at the picture real quick right here. So in my picture, I assumed that I1 was going this way, right? My answer is negative, though. So it's actually going the other way. But if I were to stick an ammeter into the circuit, it would actually read negative 0.8 amps. I'm going to use the mouse for this. So if I stuck an ammeter into my circuit right here and I put it oriented in the right way, it would actually read negative 0.8 amps. Um, and the point is just that the directions that I chose didn't make any difference in terms of solving the problem. You pick whatever direction you want. You don't have to spend any time thinking about what direction the current should be. Uh, I picked I2 to point to the right. I got a positive answer. Okay, so it actually does point to the right. I picked I3 to go this way, and it actually goes the other way. I don't need to fix anything on my diagram, though. This is just, it's just how it goes. Do you guys have any questions?
Okay. Does this all make sense to you guys? We may have to stop after this one. We're going to do one other. We're going to use so the other method that Matthew mentioned about how you can solve this too. So let's look at our equations again right here. And let's do this in another method. So let's be, call this method two. It's probably the method most of you will probably use on your homework. It's really easy. It's a lot easier. Oh my God, I can make them all the same color? Whoa, that's really legit. Huh, that's cool. Okay, so um, we'll call this method two. You guys ever heard of this before? It's a method that you can solve equations like this. And the way it works is this. You need to take all of your equations and you need to turn them into um, basically a matrix. So the way I'm gonna write it is like this. We're gonna write this equation here. We're gonna rewrite like this. We're gonna write it as negative I1 um, minus I2. In fact, we're gonna be really clear about what we're doing here so that people aren't suddenly confused. So we're gonna say this is negative. The coefficient is negative one times I1. Um, and then I2 is negative 1 times I2. And then I3 is plus 1 times I3. Okay, that's that equation, right? This equation I'm going to write as 0 I1 and then minus 5 I2 and then minus 10 I3. Oh, sorry, this one was equal to 0 and this one's equal to 5, right? The last equation here, negative 5i1 plus 5i2 and then minus 0i3, right? There's no i3. And that one's also equal to 5 volts. Okay. Now, if any of you guys have a, a, a TI82+, plus, I think it'll do this. So if you want to take that out right now, if you still have it, we're going to convert this into a matrix. And I want you to introduce, introduce this into a matrix. The matrix is going to be in the columns. We're going to have I1 here. We're going to have I2 right here. And we're going to have I3 here. And over here, we're going to have our voltages, basically just constants, right? And our equations are basically going to look like some coefficient multiplied by each of these things that's equal to this voltage, right? So the first one is going to be the, just the coefficients. So negative 1, negative 1, 1. The second equation is going to be 0, negative 5, and then negative 10. And the third equation is going to be negative, oops, and there's a 5 here too, right? And there was a 0 here, my bad. So it's negative, it's, it's negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 0. 0, negative 5, negative 10, 5 for the second equation. And then for the third equation, it's 5, negative 5, positive 5, and then 0, and then 5. So we, we make this matrix like this. And what you want to do is you want to set this matrix equal to something like A in your calculator, okay? Can you guys do that? Can you create a matrix in your calculators and do this? And if you don't have access to a TI, what you can do is um, we can go up here and you can either do a reduced row echelon form calculator. Um, so if we do reduced row echelon form, there's a lot of calculators you can find online that will do this. And I'll probably show you how to do it in, I'm sure this one probably works. This one probably works. Um, oh, it's probably more complicated than we need. So here's our matrix. We need to make a matrix that has uh, three rows because we have three equations, four columns. We want to create the matrix. And can you guys see my browser window? Okay, cool. So, oops, let's get to where we can see it. We're just going to type these numbers in here. So it's going to be negative one, negative one, one, zero. 0, negative 5, negative 10, 5, negative 5, 5, 0, 0, 5. Now, what you're going to do if you have, I'll come over here, well, let's, let's push the button. Look at the answers. They're exactly the same answers that we got before. So this is I1, right? I1 equal to negative 0.8. Um, 
it's in a row. I did, I did an order, it should be right, yeah. So negative 0.8, positive 0.2, negative 0.6. It's just that easy. You can avoid lines and lines and lines of algebra. So it took all those lines of algebra right there and a whole bunch of junk where you guys were confused because I wasn't writing units because I was being, I was trying to make it neater and I just writing these symbols, the uh, the ohm symbols suck. So I apologize to whoever mentioned that I wasn't units. I absolutely should be using units, but it just ends up looking kind of complicated. Maybe I overcomplicated. The point is you gotta do all that algebra or take these, plug it into a matrix, okay? And then if you're on a TI, what you have to do is you have to find a function. And I'm gonna show you where it is here in a second. It's called RREF, which stands for reduced row echelon form, open parenthesis. You put your matrix in here and then it will spit out the matrix you just saw. And if you can find it, it's going to look something like this. It's going to be diagonal. Diagonal matrix is a matrix where it's like, whoops, that's a zero. Diagonal. And then you put the answers right here. So it ends up being negative 0 0.8, 0 0.2, and 0 0.6, or, or whatever it was. I don't know if I got those right. This one's negative, right? Yeah, this one's negative. That's what your calculator is going to spit out. It's going to give you the answers, basically. Does that make sense to you guys? Can I do some kind of online TI-84 emulator kind of stuff? Wabbit emu, will this work? Do I have to download it though? I don't want to download anything. Give me online. Uh, no. This one? Will this one work? Load ROM image to activate justified out. So I have to get the ROM. Eh, whatever. I don't want to do that. I need, I'll, I'll set this up for next time. Maybe I'll show you guys an example. Can you guys figure out where these things are in your calculator? Do you know how to set up the matrix? I guess I could show you on this calculator. Wait, not that one. So you go to find the matrix. You push second matrix right here. And you can type it in. And then you save it and then you go the next thing you do is you go second matrix and there's a tab that's called like math or something like that and you scroll down through there and you'll find this function right here but since we're not going to be having in-person exams it doesn't really matter if you can do it with a ti or not you can always just do it with a uh you know you can just do it with the, the browser as far as i'm concerned All right, does anyone have any questions? I've been talking for a long time, so I'm gonna stop now. <laughs>